Well, hello, hello, hello. Much love to you all. May God bless you all. Hit that like button. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all today. I'm going to go over a few updates. So, here is more increased activity of fireballs over the U.S. and Canada skies. About 350 reports on October 6th. Of course, we know with all the other things going on in the air, um, this is just an increased activity that we're continuing to see more signs of the times but um over parts of the u.s and parts of canada there's multiple reports they were saying between october 6th and october 5th um people from 11 states illinois indiana kentucky maryland new york ohio pennsylvania tennessee virginia west virginia and wisconsin as well as Canadian provinces of Ontario and Quebec reported seeing sightings. They, th they received 352 reports across the Midwest and Canada, and it was captured on several different uh, cameras, of course. Um, sometimes people catch it even from their doorbell uh, cameras, uh, as we've seen videos like that before. Um, but as you can tell here, here we are. In Ohio, right here is a map. They're pointing to this location here. Uh, fireballs were seen in the sky. Then we see a map that shows there was reports from all of these areas around here that had seen, even up here by Ottawa, where they had seen um, this activity. Only one down here in um, Tennessee, and it was in the Pigeon Forge um knoxville area not far from Asheville over here my dad but guys these reports have been increasing uh by numbers it just seems like at least two times a month we're talking about all these plenty of footage that has been shown by many different people throughout the u.s that showed pictures of this taking place so guys Florida's getting prepared for another major hurricane. I think just a couple days ago, it was it was just a tropical storm. It got up to a Category 1, Category 2, Category 3, and now we're talking Category 4. Uh, and I do believe in the report says just two miles per hour away from a Category 5. So by the time it makes landfall on Wednesday... Uh, it could potentially become a Category 5. But you know a lot of this region was hit not just too long ago. They are saying it is only two miles per hour away from a Category 5 hurricane, and it is going to hit uh, these regions from Cedar Key to Tampa, Fort Myers, and Naples. And then, of course, um, all these other areas here are going to be affected by a tropical storm watch. So far, uh, we'll see how it changes. It's almost the whole um, western side of Florida is going to be affected by this. And remember, not too long ago, even though Kirk is heading out towards Europe, they're saying that this side over here of the East Coast could receive rip current tides. And uh, you never know. These two could meet up and... You just never know with these storm systems anymore. It has just uh, been one crazy storm after another this year. Uh, so many tornadoes and uh, typhoons throughout the whole world, hurricanes. So definitely be keeping more prayers and uh, just knowing that, guys, these are signs of the times, um, you know, I know it might be hard for some people to accept, but the Lord God allows anything that happens to happen, and uh, he's in control. A simple fact. If you can't accept that he's in control, then you don't really have a relationship with him. Just going to be real with you. The last one was up to 20 feet. We're talking 12 feet so far of storm surge. Could increase. Like I said, time will tell. Uh, they're expecting it to really strengthen by the time it hits here. And then, it, of course, it will run through Florida and go right back out. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be the same pattern as, you know, the last one kind of did a loop and went up into the United States. This one's looking like it's going to go right out into 
the Atlantic, but uh, this is definitely their state of emergency once again um, being taken place. So we see here in the Amazon, the drought continues to be one of the worst ever on record as we see that the water levels are getting lower and lower and lower, the lowest since 1902 when they began to keep record. So the Amazon River Basin has been experiencing severe drought and wildfires this year. The River Basin experienced a record drought in September after several ri riverbeds fell significantly below their average water levels. And it's continuing to happen, guys. As uh, Yes, there's a lot of rain. Uh, a lot of uh, the rainforest is on fire. A lot of the area is on fire. We've done multiple streams talking about... Um, just the world's on fire and these fires have not stopped just because not reporting on them. Just, uh, there's less, there's less reporting going on about these fires. Uh, cause everything, of course, you know, this time of year, what everything's focused on. Um, this here, I've been keeping eyes when it comes to homeschool for a while, because of course we're one of the, uh, very many families in America that have started homeschooling. And we know that there's certain political movements that really want to put a dampering on homeschool or all in all do away with it. And really uh, they're starting to realize that the number of homeschooling is actually increasing to a very rapid rate, but there is some things that make them not know the numbers too well uh, 20 states either do not collect or do not report homeschooling participation data. I live in one of those states. Indiana does not collect anything. Um, so they know little about the trend in these states. But as for all the other states, they're noticing an increase in this. And with a lot of uh, ideology being pushed, um, we know that they don't want homeschooling. Actually, it's been proven that homeschooling numbers actually show that most people are more intelligent when they homeschool. Albert Einstein was homeschooled. He was one of the most intelligent people in the world. But, you know, um, really all this started in 2020 and is increasing and increasing, increasing. And of course, they might blame it on these but I think just a lot of people are also starting to realize as schools are pushing gender ideology and stuff, we just don't want our kids involved in that. Uh, the world is already hard enough for kids nowadays. It's harder for kids, I feel, than it is for us because I remember as a kid playing, you know, going back and forth throughout the neighborhood. We had the baseball diamond. We would all do community sports within the neighborhood, you know, playing basketball or football or even soccer, just many things or bike riding, cops and robbers. Uh, there's even been studies saying how kids find it reportedly hard to even make friends nowadays because if they're not online together, they have a hard time communicating in person together. So um, that's why I think it's harder for kids nowadays, not just with the gender ideology, but they have had their youth. Um, I couldn't imagine as a kid growing up with what we're seeing nowadays. Um, I come from an era where it, kids had a lot of freedom. You could trust uh, things a lot more. Uh, than you can nowadays. Uh, things have just gotten increasingly wicked to where I can understand a lot of parents are very, very, um, you know, protective of their children nowadays, which we have to be, guys. But in South Carolina, the number of children being homeschooled went from 20,000 in 2019 to 2020 to just shy of 30,000 the following year and has risen well over 30,000 since then. That doesn't give us an exact number, but. Uh, South Dakota saw 6,600 children being homeschooled in 2020 and 2021, up from barely 5,000 a year before, but over 10,000 children in South Dakota are now being homeschooled. These numbers are growing. I mean, we can continue to look. They're looking. Rhode Island's had an 8% increase, um, uh, you know, in, in some, or why, uh, that's Wyoming had an 8% increase. Rhode Island had a 67% increase. I mean, people are starting to increase their um, focus on their children, which the Bible tells us that we are to train a child in the way they should go. And that doesn't go away just because we're in the end times. We have to train our children to knowing the signs of the times and having a faith with 
the Lord Jesus as this day is getting ever so closer. They need to have that faith and know what it is. We need to teach them, you know, prayer is very important. Because guys, not just our children, but even ourselves, we have to lead as examples for our children. We have to show them the way, and the way is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. So guys, keep your heads up. We fight from victory, not from defeat. This is an amazing time to live, nevertheless. I know it's hard when we are dealt with hardships, but John 16, 33, I have overcame the world. He tells us there will be hard times, but he overcame it all. The reason why I say don't get discouraged, I see a lot of people out there that are supposed to be here for inspiration for you guys, but are always like, oh man, today sucks, we're awake, we're alive. This is not what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to edify one another. And why I say these are blessed times to live in, because this just proves even more to a world that denies the Bible, that the Bible is true, and that it's accurate, and that everything taking place is exactly the way the Lord said it would take place. So praise God that we have a leader, a commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ, who does not forsake his people, as political leaders in the world do. Christ is always there for us. So much love, and may God bless you.